Great, thank you. Perfect, thank you. Right. Um, so we've been talking about language, and I'd like to uh, continue with some of that theme. Um, I find language very powerful, and um, I've been researching cybersecurity for uh, over 15 years now, nearly. And I think uh, beyond technology, the way we approach and talk about technology is very important. It, in fact, shapes technology from outside within. Um, we hear about cyber attacks. Not a week goes by without a story on some personal data compromise, without a telco or a bank attacked, and so on. And um, the way we talk about it, whether it's policy or media or academia or students on us, um, I think has a, has, a, has a huge impact. So some of the headlines, a couple of headlines that I've picked up um, in the last couple of years around some of the events that we, we see are very interesting. Um, a real doomsday scenario here, an irreversible disaster, as it were. <laughs> Essentially, what is a software failure. Um, it paints a picture of doom, uh, gloom, um, paints a picture of uh, a negative, a hugely um, critical uh, kind of an event which affects our lives beyond anything else. And then we also talk about people that are behind some of these incidents, some, some of these serious cyber attacks. So end of last year, there was a very uh, a big story around a very famous telco telef telephone provider. And um, essentially, the headline boiled down to something like this around an individual who um, initiated that and was held responsible. Now, let's, 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 let's look at the words here and let's try to analyze as to what's happening. The reality of this is that someone very smart, someone like one of you in the audience, has essentially found a breach, found an error, a mishandling of software somewhere, and taken advantage of that. A criminal act, no doubt, but an act of real creativity and real genius. That's, that's got to be said. Um, the picture that these set of words paint are really interesting. There is this notion of a social pariah, a kind of a, um, an addict, um, someone who is violent, confined to a bedroom. Um, and once again, it paints a very dark, dreary picture um, of someone who is either a, a serial criminal, possibly, who's, who's done, committed a far graver act. Which, as I say, the reality of that, if there are any computer scientists in the audience, is essentially a software failure, a, design of, uh, a failure of design, a failure, failure of implementation of what is tried and tested, repeated software, as it were. So what this tells us is that the words are very important in how we approach technology, um, and especially more so when it comes to cybersecurity. Um, and I'm really intrigued by this because I, I think there's a real value here, a real opportunity for us to grab things like cybersecurity and use it to our advantage. So I took the National Cybersecurity Strategy of the UK, which was published originally in 2010, and I put that through um, a wordle, essentially removed some of the words that were typical for, uh, terms of reference and left the entire text as it is, as there. Um, you may not be able to pick up all the words, but I can tell you, I'll just help you towards some of the interesting words there around threat, vulnerability, attack, um, legislation, uh, government, intelligence, 
protect. They're all very scary words if you think about it. Right. Uh, it's almost as if the government scared itself. <laughs> right. Um, and that's interesting because I think it doesn't have to be that way. And it isn't, actually. The language around some of this technology, for historical reasons, has been like this and continues to be like this. So in the Oxford Dictionary, there's, a word, there's an entry for code breakers. There is no entry for code builders. As if all we do there is just break things. We don't, actually. Um, let's jump to a related area of technology, which is, you might have heard of, Internet of Things, IoT. The fact that my fridge could connect to your fridge and talk to each other, or my car connects to my bank, and so on. Um, and I just picked up some of the slogans um, around IoT, and I thought, okay, let's have a look at these. What kind of an image do they project compared to what we see here? This is an interesting set of branding and terminology. Once again, use of language and use of narrative. So Cisco would call this Internet of Things, emphasizing the fact that it can connect everything. It's an, essentially an internet, and devices connect to it. IBM calls a smart planet. It's very smart, a global vision, affecting the entire planet. It's a very positive image, isn't it? A smart planet, something that's, that's going to save us. Um, GE calls it industrial internet. Now, industrial internet is, is interesting. It gives a very sophisticated, serious feel to this. What is essentially, as I keep saying, my fridge connected to your fridge or, or, or something to that effect. Um, once again, very um, formal. The World Economic Forum talks about Industry 4.0, a reference to an industrial revolution. This is not just a product or a service. It's the whole revolution that's going to change our civilization, our societies for the better. And then we hear about things like intelligent assets as well. So ordinary things that have somehow some intelligent to it. Now, I hope you see the difference from threat, vulnerability, weakness, and attack, and that language, and that narrative, to what, I, what we have here is smart planets, to intelligent assets, and industrial internet. There's a, world, a, a, a huge gap there, a world of a difference. So the point here today is that this does make a difference. Language is important. Language is about conceptualizing, thinking, approaching, about imagination. It's very powerful. But more importantly, all this technology that we've seen in the morning and will continue to see beyond today is about our future and where we are going. So language essentially is fundamental to us. It's, where, it's, it's our history, it's our current, present, and it's, it's, it's where we're going to go. So we need to start taking the language very seriously around technology around science, around whatever we do, because it helps convey a message. And once again, we've talked about communication, whether text or, or visual and so on. So I think now is an opportunity to change, turn it around, all right? Because narrative, the kind of narrative, the use of language that we adopt now will affect cybersecurity and ultimately a lot of the technology that surrounds it, or security surrounds it. So narrative essentially drives thinking, and thinking drives our attitude, our belief, our behavior. Narrative drives value, and values drive our culture, our politics, our education, our society, which provide us with a context to build cities, build universities, grow economies, uh, and, and address grander challenges. So narrative is critical. So I want to talk about an opportunity. 
Cybersecurity and the cyberspace is an opportunity for us. Let's talk about a new community bringing together computer scientists with economists, with artists, with historians, with psychologists. Let's talk about brand new ideas for us to work on. Let's talk about innovation. Some of you are involved in R&D, research and development. Some of you would go on to commercialize that technology, a set of lab, uh, a set of code or, or, or algorithms that you work on in the lab, onto IP and onto commercial exploitation. So if you want to address those, break those old habits and address those new markets, I want to talk about how do I use economics to address cybersecurity? How do I align, misalign liabilities using regulation? How do I use network effects for better secure adoption of technology? Right? How do I minimize negative externality? These are all economic concepts, completely different sides. But if we think about them differently, you know, how do we want to bank in the future? How do we want to use our passwords in the future? Without fear, I say. Once again, room for innovation. I want to talk about design. I want to talk about how we may use our authentication systems, our technology very differently in the future. How do we reconceptualize risk, liability, governance, security, and redraw some of those boundaries? Let's design things differently. Well, ultimately, or part of it, part of the challenge uh, would be that we'll be forced to. We'll have autonomous self-driving cars driving, and you essentially see in very soon, in, in, in about a few years' time, sitting down and logging into your car, <laughs> right? Okay, so that's, that future is not far away. Uh, let's talk about infrastructure that supports that uh, application. Let's talk about systems. Let's not talk about vulnerabilities and weaknesses and threats. Let's talk about serious systems. So the kind of systems that you are familiar with when you fly in the air. Aircraft systems, the systems that you drive around, or buses, or transport, or travel, or healthcare, or energy. How do we engineer those systems? So that's a very sophisticated set of engineering, not just science. We're talking about methods and tools. We're talking about standards and best practices. Um, we're talking about building things here. So I'm talking about building, remember? I'm not talking about code breaking. And that's why we want to change this narrative. I want to talk about cyber physical systems. I want to talk about human systems, everything from social media, social networks to electronic voting. Think about that. This technology can help. Cyber security can essentially address some of those issues around trust um, and fraud and, and, and so on. I want to talk about resilience. Let's move beyond cybersecurity. Let's talk about dependability and reliability. Systems that are self-healing, autonomous, intelligent, smart. Imagine, uh, um, uh, imagine smart cars, imagine self-driving cars, um, imagine these systems that are essentially designed to withheld any cyber attacks or any weaknesses or any, any flaws in software. Um, so that resilience element is very important. I want to talk about a proposition here today. A proposition that we want to put forward. The value proposition here is not just any other traditional business development or a sales pitch. This is about a future, a secure foundation for us to build systems over. And this could, there could be anything, any, all kinds of, any kind of systems, or products, or services. Um, or our our day to day life. We don't want to walk around thinking that the next time I log into my bank through my phone, or the next time I drive a car that's self driving, and I'm, I'm sitting in it, maybe under an attack. Let's let's change that discourse. I want to talk about growth. So colleagues who are familiar with civil service with policy. Uh, with national policy would talk about economic growth. 
So the universe, this university and, and so many others are investing in science parks and innovation and acceleration and incubation for startups, for new ideas. Once again, lots of jobs. This year alone, the cybersecurity, global cybersecurity market is over 100 billion pounds. This year alone. So let's talk about that growth. And then let's talk about leadership. Let's start somewhere to address that narrative. You see, the last few words I've just talked about are essentially trying to, and the very first baby step, towards rethinking this problem of cybersecurity. So every time, next time, you read a story around this, think about the positive elements. Think about the opportunity there, not the problem. Think about what we can do differently to address that. Let's, let's think about where do we start from, you know? Let's think about how do we bring in those design challenges and develop new kinds of systems to address new, uh, to offer new value propositions. Um, one thing is for sure, if we want to lead, we need to be prepared to fail. Failure is not an option, it's all part of the journey. And I think failure teaches us lessons. In fact, going through failure is how we achieve our leadership. Today is just, just a tiny little window, a tiny little thought piece around how we're going to change uh, this narrative around cybersecurity. Thank you.